Hi, everybody. I just wanted to make a few comments about this week's discussion post. Overall, I thought you did an excellent job discussing the topic of retribution, and many of you suggested some really interesting ideas as far as rehabilitation, uh, just desserts, and different types of reward and punishment systems. Some of you even drew on the utilitarian theory that was outlined in our text. And I think a lot of you did a really great job, particularly bringing in some current events to our discussion. I really liked the articles that were selected and the way that you applied this week's chapters to those articles. A uh, couple of things that I wanted to mention is the difference between distributive justice and retribution. Distributive justice, if you take a uh, look back at the text and the definition, centers more around a punishment that's just and fair. And the retribution theory is more of an eye for an eye theory. And so that's not necessarily centered around a fair and just uh, position as far as punishment goes. I also wanted to point out some advantages and perhaps some disadvantages of retribution. I think that one of the advantages that many of you discussed is cultural relativism. Now, a lot of cultures do still subscribe to the eye to an eye theory. And it is important for us to consider their position and the way that they punish their people. Uh, we don't want to just steamroller over their culture belief systems, and we really do need to weigh these out, whether we agree with them or not. Now, that's not to say that we need to support them, but we should at least consider these beliefs, and we should consider the way that other governments handle these situations. It is important to understand those issues. Um, that does provide some difficulties with human rights. A lot of you talked about how this would go against American viewpoints and also many other countries and just human rights issues in general. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights does focus on human rights and Amnesty International is a big supporter of trying to eradicate some of these cultural practices. So those are just a few things for you to think about in terms of the cultural relativist argument. Uh, another person made the argument that it's a waste of our resources. And I think it is important to consider our current prison system, the way things are working, and whether or not our punishments are serving as a deterrent. Some of the capital punishment arguments do uh, argue for the idea that capital punishment deters crime. Uh, while there have been a lot of studies done that don't support that point of view. So it is important to look at uh, life imprisonment versus capital punishment. And that's something that we'll talk about a little bit later in the class. Another important point that people brought up this week was uh, whether or not this type of punishment actually serves the best interest and um, you know, enhances the learning of the situation. Many people argue that this kind of punishment does not um, you know, make anything any better, that people don't learn from their mistakes, and there is a lot of recidivism. So that's something else to consider. Um, another system that I just wanted to touch on briefly, and many of you did talk about this in your post, was the reward system. And I think we're right to take a look at the way this works uh, with children in particular, because that's a great place to start. As you know, uh, you know, punishing children through grounding and timeouts and spanking doesn't often work as well as implementing a reward system that often will lead them to not commit the crime, uh, you know, because they want the reward. So therefore, that circumnavigates the whole problem. So I just wanted to bring the reward system in. And I also wanted to point out the video I posted on uh, what survivors think of retribution as opposed to trying to implement new 
strategies and actually rehabilitating the criminals. So that's all I've got for this week. Great job, everybody.